In this section, we are going to go through some storage topics, then move on to networking for containers, host our own Docker registry to hold all our images, and use Active Directory Group Managed Service Accounts to make containers look as if they are part of an Active Directory domain and access domain resources. In this video, we will take a look at the two persistent storage options available to containers on Windows. Until now, we used containers without the need to store data on them after they were stopped and deleted. But in real-world scenarios, you will probably need to do this. If this is the case, Docker offers solutions for persistent storage in containers. Before we get into the options for persistent storage, I just want to mention that you should not use the sandbox layer of a container as storage. You should use it only when you want to build a new container image that should have the data in that layer. You can, instead, mount a folder or a so-called Docker volume in a container and give it read or read and write access to whatever is in those storage items. You can choose between bind mounts and named volumes for persistent container storage options. Let's see what they are. Bind mounts allow a container host to share one or more of its folders with containers hosted on it. This will allow you to store whatever files your containers need in the folder or folders and share them with your containers when running them by mapping a folder from your containers to the folder on the host. One thing that you need to have in mind is security. In the case of Hyper-V containers, this is a very small issue. Containers with Hyper-V isolation run as the local system account. So, if this user has access to the shared folder, you are good to go. If not, then you just have to add local system to the shared folder permissions. In the case of Windows Server containers, it is not that simple every time. A container in process isolation accesses host resources as the container identity. Since this user exists only in the container, we cannot add it explicitly to the folder permissions. What we need to do in this case is add either the authenticated users group or the users group. Named volumes are actually Docker entities. We create them and manage them with Docker. When referencing the volumes, we use the name. At creation time, you do not have to worry about placing the volume somewhere on the file system, as Docker places it where it is configured to place it. So, you just have to remember the volume name and you are good to go. Since we store these named volumes on the Windows file system, the same permissions rules that we saw for bind mounts apply also in this case. It's now time to check out how we create and use the two storage types. So let's start first with bind mounts. For this, first we need to create two folders, one directly under C and one in my current logged on users profile. It is important that you follow along like this because of security reasons, actually permission reasons. You will see later. Okay, the two folders are now created. And now I'll show you why we created them exactly in these directories. So for the first folder, you can see here that uh, users 
built-in users have access to create data and read data. While for the second folder, important to us is that only system has access. Users are not in the read or read write list for this folder. So now, let's run a container in which we will map the test1 folder from my host to the t folder inside the container. So we are now in the container. Remember, this is a uh, Windows Server container. And we created a new directory. Let's exit the container and then check on the host if the directory exists. And new exists. As you saw, because test1 allows built-in users to write files, we could create the new folder from the Windows Server container. Now let's run also a container in process isolation, but this time mount test2, which has only administrators and system. I'm not even going to try to create a new folder, I just want to see if we can list the folder. And we cannot. Since we don't have access, I think we can exit. Now, let's try test2 with a Hyper-V container. Okay, so now we have the T folder again in the Hyper-V container. And this command should now work since Hyper-V containers run as system. So no error that the folder was not found. Now let's check if the folder has new inside it. Excellent. So that was a very small glimpse at uh, bind mounts. As you saw, the Hyper-V container runs as system, so it's very easy to access folders from your host with this type of container. While with Windows Server containers, you have to tweak the settings a little in some cases. Let's clean up. And now on to named volumes. So to create a named volume, you just use this command with a specific name. For me, it's test vol. Test vol was created. Docker inspect also works on volumes, not just on containers. It's useful to give you, for example, the mount point or where the volume actually is on the file system of the host. And uh, just so we have an idea, let's get also the ACL for this folder. Okay, so System has full control, administrators have full control, users are not mentioned. So basically the same uh, applies like in the bind mount case for this folder or this volume.
let's attach the volume first to a uh, container in process isolation and notice minus minus rm this is uh, used so that when we exit the container it will be automatically deleted let's try to see if we can access the folder whoa access is denied not good Let's do the same thing, but now with Hyper-V isolation. And we should be able to create the new folder. And no access denied error. One last command I want to show you is the one to remove a uh, volume so the cleanup is now done also in this case that was a very quick look at uh, the differences and similarities between bind mounts and named volumes